are in a Cirrus. <laughs> no, not quite. It's an Alara CH2000. Let's look at it. Hi, this is Mark at Skywagon University. Um, we do videos about all different types and models and different planes as they come in. So we can't sort of do on-demand ones that we want to choose to do because we haven't got one to do it. But every now and then a plane comes in and we do a video about it if it's interesting. And this, a little bit scruffy around the edges, but a nice trainer. This is very much a 152 in performance in every way. So um, I don't know a guru list of information about its life and its history, but um, enough to talk about it a bit and show you around it. It's called, uh, it's a Zenair, Zenith Zenair Alaris AMD CH2000, or an Alaris CH2000. So let's have a closer look at it. So, the front end, business end, it's not a Rotax, it's not anything weird, it's an O235 Lycoming four-cylinder at 115 horsepower, which is the exact same engine in a Cessna 152. So, 2,400 hour TBO, Lycoming, common as everything else, maintained and looked after by anybody. Um, all the performance figures are going to be very similar to a 152 as well, like 96 knots, it holds 13 gallons of fuel per side, the useful load's about 600 pounds. It, um, so it's a perfect trainer, and when we look inside it, it's a perfect IFR trainer too, because it's a 2003. No spinner. They can have a little bullet spinner on here, but it's just functional. Okay, let's uh, walk around it and see how she's made. So I just wanted to show you this. Student-proof, trainer-proof gear. It's aluminum. It's three-quarters of an inch thick very short, very fat, and from that wheel to that wheel is one piece. It goes up, bracket, across under the plane, down to that wheel. Very, very strong gear, and very short coupled. And, you know, normal braking and a steerable nose wheel, which is just a stick. You know, it's not a high-tech um, gas-filled strut or anything. It's uh, very basic, very strong, student-proof gear. So, a good trainer. So the overall appearance of it is, obviously, low wing, gull wing door. It would be what happened if a Cherokee 140 got into the hangar for the night with a Piper Tomahawk. This would be the offspring. Gull wing doors and a low wing and a little engine in the front. So, and there's not many of these. In America, registered today, there's 113 of them. It doesn't mean it's hard to find parts or anything because they're supported by AMD. It's written on the tail. American Manufacturing and Development. It's metal, a fiberglass cowl, but metal, and it's Cherry Max riveted. All the sheet metals, Cherry Max riveted. It's very easy to fix and repair. That's ADSB out. Control surfaces are metal. Flaps are under here. This does not come down. It's like a split flap, so it comes down underneath. So it's got electric flaps. We'll show you the indicator when we're inside. Very simple fuel system, left and right, 13 gallons a side. Cheap to run, cheap to own. That engine will probably burn um, seven, six, seven gallons an hour. So 26 gallons. So it's got quite a capacity. Ground, there's a little ground service plug there for running avionics on the ground and charging it. And then the tail is kind of piperish, but it's got a little bit more, it's, sh it's shorter, but it's wider. And it has, a, it has a massive range. And obviously that's how it trims too. All metal, no vertical fin. That's the vertical fin. That bit, look, just this. And these planes were used, God save us, by the Iraqi Air Force. I don't know what for, but they were one of the major buyers. So, shock and awe. Metal rudder, pop riveted. This is the manufacturer here, AMD, Aircraft Manufacturing and Development. That's where you get parts for it. And this has been a trainer in its life. It's got a mid-time engine and a 4,000-hour airframe. Um, and it's much cheaper than a 152. A 152, a really nice 152 with Garmin equipment in it like this would be, you know, 60,000. This one's like 45,000. Massive rudder, but all very conventional. Toe brakes, elevator, vertical fin, sheet metal skins everywhere, very flat sheet metal skins, easy to fix, so it's like there's no compound curves on it, it's just flat. No baggage door. Two doors, that's nice, instructor in and out, student in and out. And 
same on this side. And a little GoPro mount, that's all that is there, is a GoPro mount on the wing, which we might use. So let's have a look in the cockpit and see what's up. So here we are in the front cockpit, business end. It's actually very well equipped. It's IFR capable, obviously two controls, the normal throttle and mixture, IFR configured gyros, two glide slopes, all your engine gauges and fuel tanks, fuel volts, ammeter, left and right tanks, fuel pressure, oil temperature and oil pressure. And then a nice stack of Garmin radios here, an audio panel, a 430 color moving map, make that look more business-like. A King Digital 155 with a glide slope. This is the glide slope for that Garmin. And then a modern um, Garmin transponder. And then elevator trim, flap switch, flap indicator. So it's half for takeoff, down, just literally up and down. And then the trim here is indicated here. And the fuel selector is right 13 gallons, left 13 gallons. And if you press that down, you can go beyond it to off. But you can't get it off by accident because that's in the way. And then interestingly over there, we'll put a close-up of it on that notice there. It says, do not start the engine with the doors open or they will fly off. So that's a good tip. Um, you can open it and just hold it crack when you're taxiing for heat, but you don't want to put a lot of airflow over them because they're just, you know, they're not a cirrus. So there it is inside. Two seats. No, um, it's got dual controls, of course, brakes on both sides because it's a trainer. Two seats and then a hat shelf and a baggage area so you can put your hat back there. There's a canopy cover in the back. But it's pretty much the same size as any of the other trainers. A Tomahawk, a Skipper, a, a 150, a 152, a Cherokee 140. They're all going to be like this. But those are all going to be 70s and 80s planes. This is a 2003, and that is nice. You could do primary flight training, go right through into instrument an hour build in this thing at seven gallons an hour. Um, so enough of the details about it. We're going to uh, take it up and fly it around and see how she feels. So I just started it and it's just like any other plane. Mags master on, key, start. Very, very simple. Avionics over here. Got the Garmin 430 as number one radio. We have Full tank in the left, so I'm burning left. So having never flown an Alara CH2000 uh, before, I'm going to fly it like a 152. There, there, there. I'm going to fly it like a 152. The speeds are 60 for takeoff and landing, and whatever above that it can do in cruise. Conventional cigar controls, instruments, gas, attitude, run up, left, right, left, both, car beat, idle. Put in uh, no flaps for takeoff and full flaps for landing. Uh, four two golf, you ready to go? Uh, we're still going to run up that. You're good to go, thank you. Okay. This is Placerville, Alaris 91 Romeo Zulu, departing runway 23, Placerville, local flight.
active elevator on it. They're reducing RPM to 25, fuel pump off. We still have fuel flow. Nice. Everything is green at this time of year. Placerville, Alara, uh, one Romeo Zulu, left downwind for two three at Placerville. So here we are at the top of downwind and we're at Patton Altitude already. So it's actually pretty good for a little trainer like this. very responsive, it's got short wings and big ailerons, a massive elevator, so it's actually a pretty nice little trainer, I wouldn't mind learning in one of these. We're doing 80 knots on downwind, we better slow it down. the flap arc. Flap arc is 105. So I'm going to put down some flaps. There's the indicator moving. And it's weird, you look out the window and you don't see any flaps going down because they are under the wing. But they're down, I can feel by the attitude of the plane. Alaris, uh, one Romeo Zulu on left base, the two three at Placido. So there she is at 60, and we're turning base. Placerville, Alaris, uh, one Romeo Zulu is on uh, left base to 2-3, a full stop at Placerville. Placerville traffic, one Romeo Zulu is turning final for 2-3 at Placerville, full stop. A lot of people ask, where's Placerville, where's the airport? This is Placerville, northeastern California, in between Tahoe and Sacramento. And it's, it's an airport right on a hill. Very nice place to visit. Wine country, white water rafting. Wow, she's a floater. So it's more comfortable at 40. No, it says landing at 60. I actually did that final float touchdown at 40. So if I were to go around and do another landing, I would be on the approach at 60 and I'd land at about 50. That was the first time for everything, and that was pretty nice. But this is a good trainer. It's got some different feel to a Cessna 152 or a Tomahawk. It's a bit more responsive. Uh, so traffic, 70 protocol, departing 2-3 for a straight out departure. Uh, but really, it's whatever you're used to. You get used to this, and it's normal. You get used to a 152, and it's normal. So I would say, great primary trainer, great instrument tra trainer as well. So we flew it. The Alara CH-2000, one of 113 in the country. Uh, in the US. So we flew it and it's very like a 152 and it's a very nice little trainer, um, an Alara CH2000. Um, we do these videos on a lot of different models and types and we do podcasts with interesting personalities who turn up at the airport. If you've got a story or a plane that's interesting, contact me and we can do um, one about you. 
so thanks for watching and if you liked it there's a subscribe thing here subscribe on there and click on the notifications to get new emails um, and notifications of other videos coming up I mean and there's going to be a lot more because spring is here and there's new planes are coming in and it's getting very busy and then late in the summer we're going to go to Alaska and do a whole series of Alaskan videos so thanks very much for watching